with 160,000 motorists passing through this stretch of 95 each day. This road is a key part of our economy and it's a key part of our everyday lives. And it's critical that we get it reopened as quickly as possible. That's why on Monday morning, I signed a disaster declaration to expedite the rebuilding of I-95, to cut through the red tape and to devote all possible resources, federal and state, to this project. We are going to show this great city, our Commonwealth and the world, the grittiness, the toughness, the ingenuity, and the capacity to get this road reopened as quickly as possible. And I want you to know we are already making progress. As I reported earlier, the north down and the southbound sides of I-95 needed to be demolished before work could begin on a new roadway. Some experts told us the demo alone could take a week or more. But thanks to Secretary Carroll's leadership and around the clock work by Abenizio, I can now report that our demolition will be done on Thursday. That means that we will have completed the demo in four days, not the week or more as they initially expected. While the demo has been going on, our other teams of PennDOT engineers and others have been hard at work too. In, coordinated, in coordination with Administrator Bat at the Federal Highway Administration and his team, we have been developing the fastest way to get this roadway reopened. I told them very clearly, put every option on the table to think outside the box and to work quickly. And that's exactly what they've done. We have determined collectively that the most efficient way to reopen I-95 is to backfill the gap in the roadway behind me and then pave over it. This approach will allow us to avoid delays due to shipment and supply chain issues and pursue a simple, quicker path. Once complete, cars and trucks can return to this stretch of 95, and then we will work together to build a permanent bridge while making sure we keep six lanes of traffic open at all times that that road construction, that bridge construction goes on. Now, while this plan was being developed, our outstanding team of lawyers in the Office of General Counsel, led by Jen Selber and other professionals, were doing their jobs to ensure that we had a team ready to do this work. I can report that the Secretary of PennDOT has hired Buckley and Company, a Philadelphia, a Philadelphia-based contractor here with us today with extensive experience in this area. We have also been coordinating closely with Ryan Boyer and the Philadelphia Building Trades, who have pledged their member, yep, you can clap for Boyer. They have pledged that their members, many of whom stand behind me today, are prepared to work 24 seven to get this road reopened. They're doing that for this great city, for this great Commonwealth and for our nation. That means around the clock work that you've seen going on here during the demo phase is going to continue until this road is reopened. Listen, Philly's a sports town and I am a sports guy. I love to play, I love to watch, and I love to coach. And I am competitive as hell. I wanna get this road reopened as quickly as possible. I'm competitive just like this great city. All of us here today, the trades and PennDOT, the city, the feds, this is our championship and we are ready to go. And I am proud as hell to be on the team with all of these guys and gals standing behind me here today. This is a team sport. We're gonna work together to show everyone that we can do big things in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. And listen, when y'all are sleeping in the middle of the night, when I'm sleeping in the middle of the night, these guys are gonna be working on this road. When some of you choose to take a day and go down the shore, they're gonna be working on this road 24 seven until this road is reopened. And I want you to know my administration is gonna to continue to be all hands on deck. We are gonna leverage every single asset we have to get this done. Let me give you one example of what that means in real concrete terms. 
under the leadership of Colonel Paris, our state police commissioner, who joins us here today. Tomorrow, the Pennsylvania State Police is going to escort trucks carrying specially designed Pennsylvania-made fill. This is recycled glass aggregate. They are going to escort them from Delco up up 95 to make sure that fill gets here as quickly as possible to put in that hole behind me and make sure not a single moment is wasted. All hands on deck. Our state police working together with our building trades, working together with Pennsylvania Phil to get this done. That's the fill they're gonna use to basically build up the ground behind me to the surface level of I-95 so then they can lay the pavement. State police is gonna make sure those trucks get through without delay and that that fill gets dropped. All hands on deck. Get I-95 reopened and repaired as safely and as efficiently as possible is our top priority. And I want you to know we are all working our tails off. We cut through the red tape. We developed a creative plan and we are executing. Under the leadership of Secretary Carroll and with the support of our federal and local partners and the talented trades workers right here in Philadelphia, we're moving full steam ahead. And we will work around the clock. Now, to chart our progress and give everyone here and everyone watching a sense of timing as we move forward, my team is setting up a 24-7 live feed so the public can watch I-95 be rebuilt in real time. That live feed will be set up and operational this week. This is government working for the good people of Pennsylvania. This is government working together with our proud partners in the trades. This is government working together at all levels. We have a lot to do, but we are gonna get this job done. And the person leading this effort for me at PennDOT is our great Secretary of Transportation, and I wanna invite him up here now, Secretary Mike Carroll. Secretary. Good morning, everyone. With the governor's wonderful leadership, we are assembled today to talk about our transition from the demolition of the, the uh, bridge behind us to the next phase, and that is the reopening of I-95, as the governor said, uh, with three lanes in either direction, north and south, uh, while we move forward with the plan to reconstruct a new bridge. Essentially, what we will have is we will have three lanes in each direction in the center area of the void behind us, and the outer area, 35 or so feet on either side, will be constructed with a new facility that will not impact the traffic that flows north and south on the three lanes. Once those are completed, then we'll transition the traffic to the completed new structure, uh, excavate, remove the material that that's, uh, constitutes the fill, uh, use that in another project, uh, and then kind of complete the reconstruction of the center part of the bridge. Uh, once that's done, of course, then the Cotman Ave exit ramp will be reopened uh, and we will have completed the work. I am externally grateful to the folks here on site to the engineers uh, uh, in Parisburg and in King of Prussia and our consultants. Uh, everybody has done yeoman's work. And there's so much happening behind the scenes that you don't see. Obviously, plenty of activity behind us that we've seen, the helicopters and such. But really, there has been tremendous amounts of work occurring that with people that are very talented engineers uh, that are able to design what I think is a forward-looking structure that meets the immediate needs of this community in this city, uh, while also making sure that we have a structure that will serve the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania for decades. And so, Governor, thank you for your wonderful leadership. Uh, there's a great team behind me. I have made so many new friends here in Philadelphia with the folks behind me in the Philadelphia Police Department and Fire Department and the media. Uh, and I really appreciate the opportunity to lead this effort uh, with the, uh, the, the support of the governor and the entire administration and the other agencies, including the Pennsylvania State Police. I will stop there and bring to the microphone Carlos Monge. He's our federal highway administration partner. Carlos. Thank you so much. I'm here on behalf of Secretary Pete Buttigieg, who was here yesterday, uh, and Shailen Batt, who's our highway administrator who was on the ground on Monday. Um, Secretary Pete promised that the U.S. Department of Transportation would do everything we could to help, and we are. Uh, our highways, our motor carrier safety, and pipelines and hazardous materials administrations are actively coordinating with state and local officials in the region. 
uh, to provide support for this incident. And just last night, our highway administration released $3 million to support PennDOT's traffic mitigation efforts, the, the demolition of the uh, damaged structure that you see behind us, and the emergency repairs necessary to restore this essential traffic. This is a complicated and congested detour route uh, that for uh, a, a, a facility that usually carries 160,000 cars a day. 8% of those are heavy trucks who are a vital lifeline for our national economy. And uh, we are making sure that uh, Pennsylvania is clear, uh, that they can get the expenses moving, and that money is not going to be a problem for this, uh, for this uh, replacement. And we're coordinating with multiple state DOTs across the East Coast to ensure variable message signs and traffic information is available. New York, New Jersey, Delaware, and Maryland. Uh, we're coordinating with local authorities to help augment local transportation op options. And finally, we're assisting, we're here on the ground, assisting with the investigation of, of the, why this accident occurred. The National Transportation Safety Board, the NTSB, is the lead federal agency on that. I'd like to commend Governor Shapiro and uh, Secretary Carroll for their uh, a flawless response and uh, really honored to be here with the uh, working uh, folks and the union members who are behind us. And it's my pleasure to introduce uh, Mayor Kenny. Thank you very much, and uh, first I'd like to share my deepest condolences with the friends and family of Nathan Moody, who lost his life in this incident. The medical examiner's office confirmed his identity last night. We are thinking of Mr. Moody's loved ones as they mourn this tragic incident and their terrible loss. Today, I also want to thank the governor and all the state and federal partners who have joined us in Philadelphia this week to assess and begin to address the impact of the I-95 collapse. I am very grateful for the immediate coordinated response by state and local partners who work quickly and around the clock to create detours and supports for commuters, travelers, residents, and local businesses affected by the disaster. I want to note as an, up, I want to note as an update that the Department of Commerce is working with Philadelphia Police Department to provide on-site access to local businesses near the I-95 bridge collapse for all employees, customers, and deliveries. If your business is experiencing access problems due to local road closures or detours, please contact the Department of Commerce Office of Business Services by calling 215-686-2100. That's 215, I'm sorry, 215-683-2100 or emailing business at phila.gov. We know that the impact of this incident also goes beyond our local economy and the state and country depend on this major highway too. So as we continue our response to the challenges created by the collapse, we are also committed to moving quickly on the process of repairing this vital piece of our country's infrastructure. State and federal support will be essential to our efforts here, and I want to thank Governor Sh Josh Shapiro for acting swiftly to sign a proclamation of, of disaster emergency. I also want to say the governor has been in office with his administration five and a half months, and I am totally impressed with the coordination, and the, uh, it's just amazing to work with you. Um, we thank you for your help. Thank you. And also, I want to also say behind us is some of the most talented and safe workers in the world uh, who are all trained to do what they do. Uh, and that's why I've, I've supported them as much over the years, because they're just a great bunch of people who provide great employment and great wages and benefits and, and also working conditions for their members. So thanks for being part of the team. Everyone here today has been working together since Sunday to address impacts on residents and travelers. We will continue to prioritize helping people and goods travel through the region, and we'll continue to share updates when we have them. So thank you again, and now I'll hand it over to the great leader of the Philadelphia Building Trades, Ryan Boyer. I want to first thank the proud men and women that have been working behind you ever since the first minute that they found out it was a fire. This is what we do. We are the Philadelphia Building Trades. We work safe, we work hard, and for this we're going to work around the clock. I want to thank the federal response, the local response, and the state response. We have the right team here. And it is fitting that it's Flag Day today in the United States because today the Building Trades plants its flag to tell the whole United States of America that we will fix this as quickly and as safely as we can. And I want to give a message to the businesses that are local. We know you're hurting. We heard what Mayor Kenny said, and we heard what Secretary Carroll and Governor Shapiro said. We're also here for you. We will make sure that this is done as quickly and as cleanly as possible, because we understand what you're facing. But I wouldn't have it any other way than to go to battle with the men and women of the most highly trained 
highly skilled workers anywhere in the world. That is the Philadelphia Building Trades Council. We have a commitment that this stuff that you call rain won't stop us. Wind won't stop us. Without it being an act of God, you'll see construction workers here every day, all day, and they will not cease to work until we get this bridge up and running safely. Thank you. Thanks, Well, thank all of our partners here, and we'll do our best to answer your questions. Rosemary? Yes, thank you. Open it. We're going to be working our tails off on this. You'll have a live stream so you can track the progress. We'll be giving regular updates on our progress. I return to what I said a moment ago. They told us it was going to take a week or more on the demolition. We're going to have demolition done Thursday. We're working hard, we're working fast, and we're working safe. Could you ballpark your governor? Could you ballpark your governor? Could you ballpark your governor? I'll get your questions one at a time. Governor, I'll governor, come back to you. Governor, Go ahead. could you at least ballpark it when you think you get your backfill in and pay the We're working as quickly as possible. The backfill will be here on site beginning tomorrow. We are not wasting a single second. These guys are going to be working 24-7, and you'll be able to watch that. Rosemary? The cost is being determined. The federal government has said they will cover the cost. We're working closely with them. I also signed a disaster declaration which freed up $7 million in immediate state money. Here's the bottom line. We will have a full accounting of the cost and we will have every dollar we need to get this done. I-95 southbound at Commonwealth I'm hearing that that is reopened at Commonwealth. Any detour issues, I'm gonna to defer to the city. Mary, you wanna? The city's taking the lead on uh, announcing any detours. They're all being published on pa.gov slash I-95 updates. You can check there. We realize this is a challenge for motorists. That's why these guys are working their tails off to get done as quickly as possible. Yes. We are going to get this job done as quickly as possible. We're going to get this job done as quickly as possible. <laughs> Jeff, you're real good at this, man, but I'm not bad at it either, so I'm not going to... I'm not going to engage. We're going to get this done as quickly as possible. Listen, there is no team I'd rather be going to bat with than these guys behind me here. They're going to work fast. They're going to work safe. And we're going to make sure the public sees their progress and provide you with updates as we go forward. Governor, this northbound exit, was it up to current standards at the time of the crash? Mr. Secretary? Yes, it was, and the bridge was structurally sound. The bridge was only 10 years old. Is there a waiver issued for this left turn exit? I'd have to double check that there are many left turn exits on interstates in our state, as there are in other states. This is your first emergency declaration since. I just can't hear you. This is the, your first emergency declaration since the constitutional change to limit your power. What happens after the 21 days now? I'm confident lawmakers will give us whatever help, support, resources we need in order to see this job through. Democrats, Republicans alike want to see I-95 get rebuilt. How much is the initial contract? To hang on, hang on. I'll come back to you. Go ahead. Governor, when you talk about the workaround that you're working on here, is this going to be reduced capacity? Like, can you explain a little bit more about what we're going to see in the interim? Motors will be able to travel on I-95 once it's paved on top of the fill. It'll then allow us the opportunity to work on building the bridge and keeping six lanes of traffic open at once. This is the speediest, safest way that will allow us to get back to capacity on 95. Jeff, I'll come back to you. Go ahead. Beyond the construction costs, there's other costs like policing. Is the state pay, or who's paying for all the that? The costs are going to be uh, covered by the federal government. I've freed up $7 million in our uh, state resources to cover any immediate costs. And Jeff, yes, it'll be three on south, three on the north side, Does that six total. All, all those, the, 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 uh, Mr. Secretary can uh, handle those questions as to the contract in Buckley. Go ahead. All of the costs haven't been finalized, so it's an open-end contract, which is very common in such a scenario. Can you talk about the process of, of using these contractors yesterday? You talked about Avenizio. Uh, Avenizio was already here doing work, and that's why they got the initial bid to do the demolition. Uh, the Buckley firm is quite capable of doing this work. We wanted the work, uh, the workforce to be readily available, the equipment to be readily available, and the firm to have the expertise. Buckley checked all those blocks. Mr. 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 
give again that number for you can give again the number for businesses that may be impacted the website or something that they can call. 215-683-2100 or email business at phila.gov. Governor, how do you speak? The public will be rightly concerned about safety. You're going to backfill and pave. How will you convince the public this thing is going to be safe? We wouldn't be going forth with this option if it wasn't safe. We said very clearly, we're going to make sure we build a safe roadway and as efficiently as possible. Safety is our top priority. These guys know about safety. This is what was recommended by the experts. It'll be safe and we'll get it open as quickly as possible. Mr. Secretary, is there anything with this new bridge that's going to be built that can better protect against fire coming from underneath the bridge? The department and our engineers always look at evolving technology. I'm certain that we will use the very best and latest uh, material that satisfies the traveling public needs. Uh, uh, we will build it to the highest standards. But does that mean fire resistant or perhaps fire material? Go ahead, Meg. It's a recycled glass aggregate that is recommended by the experts here as the proper fill that will allow us to pave the roadway over, to do it safely, to do it as expeditiously as possible, and then allow us to do the necessary work to build the bridge on top of that without disruption to traffic. And this means a lot of jobs for Pennsylvanians. It means a lot of jobs for Pennsylvanians. Um, and as thrilled as I am to see these guys doing this work, I think we all wish we weren't doing this work, but they're prepared to do it. They're the best in the world at doing it, and they're going to get it done. I just didn't hear the beginning. How many tons of fill do we have an approximate? How many tons of fill, Mr. Secretary? I believe the technical term is a lot, but let me get you something even more. It, it, it's more in cubic yards than it is tons. Uh, it's very lightweight material and it will give us the ability, once we are ready to remove it, to reuse it in another project. And so it's very lightweight, recycled glass uh, type product. Um, uh, the number of cubic yards, uh, 15,000 cubic yards comes to mind, but I will confirm that for you after the event. Let me let me ask a question of, of Mr. Boyer. It's raining out. Did anybody stop working behind us? No. No. All right. This, this process of, of doing this. Hang on. Just one at a time. I'm, I'm doing my best to get all your questions. This Go ahead. The process of doing the backfill and then paving over it while you work on the bridge itself, has that been done in any other capacity in Pennsylvania before? I mean, the ground we're standing on was backfill, but... Go ahead. I didn't hear the question. I'm so sorry. The process of the backfill. Backfilling like up to a bridge. This process of backfilling and then paving over a major highway, I-95, has this ever done before anywhere in Pennsylvania? I'm sure it has been. Uh, I, I can't cite it off the top of my head, but I know this. It's going to be engineered in a way that will be completely reliable for the traveling public while the remainder of the work is done. I have every confidence that the uh, engineers at PennDOT, uh, our consultants, Federal Highway Administration oversight, it will be engineered and, and delivered in a way that is completely safe. Can you tell us any places that can use locally this? Hang on, hang on, go ahead. Will the trucking company be on the hook for any of these costs? It's an ongoing investigation. We'll see what happens when that's over. Here and then, and then Jeff for is the Is there final. any place locally this backfill technique has been used? In New Jersey, there was a backfill that collapsed. Yep. Yeah. No. The backfill has been used on 95. We will get you specific examples of where it's been used. We yeah. will use, and can you ballpark when you have the permanent 95 back in place, when you've done the outside and the inside, and you can get up there and... Does it count as a out. final question if he asked that question three times yes, already? Sir, I, I, I asked about the temporary fix. We are working. By doing it this way, we said we were going to think outside the box. We are going to be creative, all hands on deck. This is a creative approach that's going to allow us to move more expeditiously and in a safe manner. We're moving as quickly as possible. You all will be able to watch that progress, be able to watch the great work these women and men behind me do, and we're going to get this open as quickly as possible and continue to report back to all of you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.